What's up everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today in the markets, as well as talking about some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here, heading into the month of October in 2019. And oh boy, do we have some huge news regarding President Trump that we have to talk about today as well which could potentially crash the stock market here in the short term, in my personal opinion. So if you guys want to be further connected with our community, feel free to go down below, hit that subscription button, and also go down below and check out the Discord group chat, the Strive Smart Discord group, as well as the Strive Smart Facebook group. All of those are linked down below. And if you guys enjoy the content and you want to support me, just go down below, smash that like button to show your appreciation, and let Let's get right into it, guys. So the S&P 500 today, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies, ended up closing the day down $25, down 0.84%. And right off the bat, guys, on this four-hour chart, you can see we ended up closing above 2950 as well as those moving average support levels being the 50 and the 180 SMA here on the four-hour chart. So that's a pretty good sign at least in the short term here, that the S&P has found support after this bad, bad news that we got today that affected the stock market, right? We've been talking about this overall channel between 29.90 and the all-time high. We obviously broke below that. I believe it was today. If we look at the intraday chart, we gapped up to 3,007. We blew right through 29.90, and that gave me the go to trade what I ended up trading today, um, which we'll get into here in a couple of of minutes and you can see once we broke through that we plowed through it honestly guys we went all the way down to that 2950 that rough area of support that we've been talking about and it seems like we got a double bottom there a pop up but ultimately we weren't able to close the day on a nice upswing we pretty much continued getting rejected under those moving average resistance levels being this 50 and this 180 SMA here on the one day one minute chart if we go to the 20 day one hour chart you can see on a bit of a closer basis here that the S&P did end up holding the 180 SMA on the one hour chart and you can see it even clearer here how 2950 that rough area is a very very strong level of support for the S&P 500 so overall right now guys in terms of the S&P, 2950 is extremely critical, right? If we break that tomorrow, that means we're breaking one support being 2950 and the moving average support levels, which have been support levels over the past couple of weeks. Those are two extreme support breaks that could lead to a lot more selling, in my opinion here, in terms of the S&P 500, right? If we draw out some other resistance levels or rather support levels at this point, the next one, if we break 2950, you know, it could be around 2930. That's one that I'm watching. You know, under that might be 2900 flat. That could be the next one. So there are some levels you know, between 2950 and 2900 flat. But if we break 2900, guys, you know, we might be getting a bit ahead of ourselves here. But if we do, you know, the next one that I'm seeing that's a prominent level of support is going to be around 2850. So those are a couple of levels, some ranges to keep an eye out for, you know, if the markets do get do get uglier here in these next couple of days, which is a pretty big possibility with the heaviness, the weight of this um, new that we ended up getting today. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, guys, was down 142 points today, down half a percent. And just like the S&P on the four-hour chart, the Dow Jones also held moving average support levels, being these two levels that you see here, the 50 SMA and the 180 SMA. We also successfully held 26,600 as a level of support, which is a good sign, putting us in the channel right now between 26,600 and and around 26,900, putting us in a window of about 300 points here. So I already drew out trend lines here to show upcoming support levels. So if we break 26,6, guys, we may be going down to 26,2. 26,2 is very, very prominent. You know, that's a support that if we break that, you know, we may be going down to 26 flat, 26,000. And of course, the deeper and deeper we get, we're going to get into 25,000 with a very strong level being 25,500. 
$500. If we zoom in a bit to the 20-day here, guys, you can see we're also holding that 180 SMA on the one-hour chart, just like the S&P. And if we go to the intraday chart here, you can see we gapped up a bit. There was hope at this point that the markets you know, could potentially run up today, but then all of a sudden, boom, we tanked, boom, we tanked, and then we broke below 26.9, which is a very strong support, and uh, we got all the way down to that 26.7 level, and now we're in, again, like I said, that 300-point window. So the NASDAQ here, guys, it says that the futures are up $8 right now, but that is not where the NASDAQ closed. I'm pulling up my Yahoo Finance app to show you guys and talk about exactly where we closed. That is down down 120 points. So this closed the most in the red, the deepest in the red out of the three major indexes today. It was down 1.5%. So that's pretty huge. You know, tech for the most part got rocked today. Facebook down five bucks, Google down 15 bucks, Microsoft down two bucks, Netflix down 11. Guys, Netflix is just getting demolished here, you know, down 5%. You know, a lot of people have been asking me about Netflix at this point. I'm thinking Netflix Netflix is going down to 230, which is the low we had. We were at back in the big sell-off in December of 2018. You know, Apple was down about a dollar today. Not too bad of a day for Apple, but still it was in the red. So tech was very, very red today, which did drag down the entire NASDAQ. And overall, if we just look at some technicals here on the NASDAQ, guys, very good sign is that we are holding the 180 SMA support on the four-hour chart. It seems to be a trend across these three indexes that they're all holding moving average support levels, which puts it at an interesting spot for the rest of this week. Because if we bounce at these levels, we could be going back up in the short term, right? But if we break below, this is going to be a technical break that can lead to a lot more selling, right? That's kind of what I'm thinking right now. And if we just draw out some levels, you know, the NASDAQ right now, this level at about 77 is a pretty good level of support. You can see it was an old resistance pretty much in the month of August. And if we break that, guys, we could be free falling at this point. You know, if I draw the next level all the way down to about 7,500 flat. So that's kind of a support to watch. You know, if we hold and pop, we may be going back up to test 7,850. You know, if we break, that could be a straight drop down to $7,600. If we zoom in a bit to the 20 day one hour, you can see it even closer how strong of a support this is. And on the intraday chart, one day, one minute, you can see we kind of bounced in the morning towards the market open first 30 minutes of the market. And then boom, we got crushed. We broke through the support, gapped all the way down. And then we held that support pretty strong at 7,700. So that's kind of just the breakdown right now of the markets. Let me know down below in the comments, what do you think? And let's get into what ended up happening today and under a minute 30 seconds and I do have this article here on my phone that I'm going to read directly from so you guys can get a bit of an understanding here briefly what 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 caused the market to get crushed today right so stocks slumped Tuesday on word an impeachment inquiry will be started against President Trump as well as on Trump's angry rhetoric over both China and Iran the market was mostly buffeted by political news all day and the climax came on news House Speaker Nancy Pelosi was going to announce a formal impeachment inquiry against President Trump later today. The move came as the president promised to release a transcript of his phone call with Ukraine's president, which sparked questions of whether the administration was trying to bully the Eastern European country into investigating former president, Vice President Biden, and his son, Hunter Biden. Meanwhile, the president slammed China for its stubbornness in not exceeding to U.S. demands for more open markets. He also railed against Iran, saying the nation had bloodlust. So this is pretty insane, guys. You know, right now, a Trump impeachment, if that actually went through... I personally think that that would tank the stock market 100%, right? At this point, if Trump were to get impeached, who knows who would step up? Obviously, the vice president would step up um, at, at first, right? And 
you know, who knows, right? This, I, I, I don't even know when the last time an impeachment occurred and how that correlated to the stock market's performance. But just a gut feeling and the way that the market reacted to the news today, the, the, the way the market reacted to the news today with the big tank, I think if it actually went through, which who knows at this point, we'll obviously get more news regarding that inquiry. You know, if it actually went through, though, the market could get rocked, guys. So that's just the gist of what happened very, very quickly quick excerpt from an article here of what happened today regarding the news that tanked the market. I would love to know what you guys have to think about that. What do you think the stock market will do, how the stock market will react to this. Let me know down below in the comments. I would love to know. And now let's jump off and, and talk about what I ended up doing today in terms of my trading. So there's this ETN called TVIX. I talk about it a lot on this channel. It's a volatility ETN, meaning it trades based upon volatility in the market, aka the VIX, right? The VIX, ticker symbol VIX, is the CBOE market volatility index. This goes up when the markets are very rocky, when the markets are typically headed down, right? And we talked about how between the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Dow, we were down around half a percent to 1.5% today. And what happens typically when that happens? Volatility comes in, right? VIX was up $2 today, up 14%. And again, what did that do? That, that, that popped up TVIX, which goes up whenever the VIX is up and whenever the markets are are going down. So remember that critical support level that I talked about on the S&P? Well, once we dove below 29.90 today, you know, again, we plowed through it, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, this gave me the go to just put some money into TVIX, right? I didn't do much trading up until this point. This was two hours into the market. You know, we popped up. We were aggressively selling off at this point. I wanted to see where we're going to hold 29.90, where we're going to break through it. And if we were to break through it, which did end up happening, I was going to get into TVIX. And again, that's exactly what ended up happening. So TVIX at this point in time, guys, at 11.30, you know, it was already up a sizable amount from where it opened um, at the market open, right? You can see from 12.50 all the way up to where it was at 11.30, which was around, I'd say, 13 bucks. That already moved 5%. So at this point, guys, when we broke 29.90, we started to pull down here on um, TVIX, and I pretty much just ended up getting in on this dip on the 50 SMA support, right? I was just trying to ride the trend. A very important thing to do is to not fight against the trend when you're looking to day trade, especially when you're looking to swing trade, right? And in this case, the trend was clearly up, right? The trend was up. The markets were dumping. Again, we broke that critical support. So I wasn't going to fight against the trend. I was looking to hop in at the bottom and ride the potential wave back up. And that's exactly what I ended up doing, right? Ended up getting in I think it was like 13.10, 13.12. It was when it really just consolidated and started to pop up. And that's where I started to build my position. We get going, we got going, we got going up to 13.50, started to pull down a bit, still was holding at this point, right? We held a higher low. That gave me some hope. And then once we started to go back up, that's where I started to shave off uh, my profits and selling right at around the old resistance at about 13.45. So this was a very quick, I guess it wasn't the quickest, trade. It was about a 50 minute hold here um, in terms of TVIX. But in terms of my profit, guys, got about 2.4% on this trade. And I do expect this to continue to be a very good play as long as these markets are very volatile. And if they continue to go down on this impeachment news, and as we start to get more news about what's going on with this. So this kind of leads me into what stocks and ETFs I'm watching. TVIX being the main one here. Honestly, Honestly, guys, you know me. If you've been following my channel for a while now, I love trading this one during red times, during times when the stock market's going down and when the stock market's very volatile, right? Whenever there's news regarding the trade war, right? Maybe negative news regarding the economy that, that affects the stock market. This is one that I love playing and I think it's always worth watching when the markets are volatile. So TVIX, definitely watching that. Another one that I'm watching 
is SQQQ, which goes up whenever the NASDAQ is selling off. And you guys saw it. Tech got rocked today. The NASDAQ was down the most out of the three major indexes. This tends to be how it works. From my analysis of watching these markets for a very long time, day to day, guys, I can tell you this from personal experience. The NASDAQ on a red day is typically the reddest out of the three major indexes because tech gets hit pretty hard during rocky times because tech, they aren't the stablest investments. They aren't the safest investments, and that's why they get hit the hardest, right? Let's be honest. People aren't selling out of blue chip stocks that affect the Dow 30. They're, they're selling out of the NASDAQ stocks, a lot of these tech stocks that have a big weight on the NASDAQ. That's just kind of how it goes, and if that continues, SQQQ is going going to continue to go up. And we're at a point right now where we're under this 180 SMA, which if we do break out of it, that would be an extremely good sign of a breakout for SQQQ. And how does this trade, you may be asking yourself? Well, it goes up three times what the NASDAQ is going down. So let's say the NASDAQ is down 2% one day, for example. SQQQ is going to be up 6% because it's a 3x leveraged ETF. That's kind of how it works, right? It's not exactly 3x, some days the NASDAQ might be down 1.75% and SQQQ might be up 6%, which isn't exactly three three times, right? But it's roughly in that ballpark. So SQQQ, watching that one, no doubt about it. SPXS, which goes up whenever the s and is selling off. This is one that I'm watching that trades based upon the S&P. Very, very good to have ETFs that trade on the NASDAQ, S&P. I think that's good. Um, it offers, uh, honestly, variety in your watch list for you to trade whatever you're more comfortable with. And some other ones, UVXY. That's another one that's kind of like TVIX. It goes up whenever the VIX is going up, whenever the markets are going down. Very, very similar to TVIX. So as the markets are rocky, we might be seeing some more red here. Market ETFs are going to be huge. I'm watching those closely. Another one that I'm watching, guys, is going to be gold, right? Gold typically goes up when the markets are selling off, right? A lot of people view it as a hedge, and it does well. You can see ever since holding the 49, uh, 1495 level of support, we've been breaking out, right? Breaking out of moving average resistances, the 50 SMA, the 50 SMA. Now it's looking like we're testing that level at about 15 40, which is a resistance. If we break this point, guys, we could be gapping up right up to that high at about 1566. And what does well when gold's going up? We all know this at this point, or 95% of us know this at this point. GDX goes up, right? And what trades based upon GDX? JNUG, the good old JNUG 3X leveraged ETF. It's a bull gold ETF that I'm going to be watching here as gold potentially could continue to go up. So there are a couple of other stocks that I am watching, guys, but go check out my other video that I uploaded today if you do want to see the other two stocks that I'm looking to trade right now. And I'll have that video linked down below in the description box for those of you guys that are interested to go watch it. And I'll probably have it up here as an end screen in a couple of seconds once the video does end up ending. So that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed this video, if you found value in this video, if you found it helpful, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you want to see further content from me, and drop a comment. Let me know your thoughts on the market. And do not forget, do not forget, guys, to join the Strive Smart Discord group chat, join the Strive Smart Facebook group. All of those are linked down below. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching, guys. Peace out.